Hey guys, this is Pretty Joe, and this is the third video in Building a Game with Unity. Uh, what we're going to do in this one is uh, basically just make some weapons for your character, and I'm going to show you how gizmos and Unity work. Um, <clears throat> so we'll just get started right now. I usually keep myself organized, so I'm creating a weapons folder. And make a new C sharp script eleven, and we're also going to make two other scripts. Um, one is going to be called base entity, which will be what uh, your main character and your enemies derive from, and we're going to have another script called projectile. All right. Um, first, we'll start with the base entity, just to get things going. Alright. Um, so first, things first, I'm going to create some protected variables for the health and its maximum health. Set it to 100 and protected float max health is 100. Now, um, in order to access these variables from other classes, we're going to make them read only. And nice little fancy feature that C Sharp does is. Basically, I'll just show you. Alright, so what this does is in any other script that accesses base entity, you will not see mHealth purely because it's protected. Now, what you will see is current health and it will return whatever m health is equal to, and you cannot um, you cannot give it a value, making it a read-only variable. If we wanted to, we could either just turn this back to public, or in here we would just go set m health equals value. But we're not going to need that. And let's do the same for max health. All right. Um. For right now, we won't need any of this stuff. We're just getting this script ready for the next tutorial basically or for our next steps so what we're going to do first is create a function called take damage we're going to make it a virtual function that way we can override it and still use some of the features of it And we're just going to uh, subtract the amount and check if the player dies. Or check if the object dies. Else, center equals zero. Die. Die. Which will be a function we create. And we'll do something similar for heal. Damage. And we're just going to make sure that it does not go past max health.
simple enough. And we do not want this function to be called outside of this class. Because we don't really have any reason to uh, call it at all. Unless the object's health is zero. So this is a good starting point for this script. Uh, we really don't need much more. Um, at this point, anyways. So, open up our projectile and our weapon script. Weapon projectile. Alright. Um, let's start with the projectile. We'll do the weapon last. Just so I can show you the gizmos and not have any sort of distraction afterwards. Alright. <clears throat> so, we're going to do something similar with what we did with base entity. Uh, except for speed and its movement direction and all that kind of stuff. Speed, max speed. Uh, movement direction, which is a vector three. Uh, acceleration. Span. and a type which is just going to keep track of what uh, basically what type of object fired this projectile that way we can check and see um, Basically, if we should be doing damage to the object it collides with or not. Because we don't really want enemies to be shooting other enemies. Right? That's just dumb. And in order to use type, we need to change something up here. We just need this use system. And we'll just fill in these two. that going. We'll just set up a few things and start. Um, movement direction will be just the forward, so equals 
equals transform dot forward. Um, we'll make sure oh, before we move on, we need to have a collider attached to each projectile. That way, we can tell whether or not it hit something. And in order to do that, without having to manually bring it in in the editor, we're going to use something called require component. And what this does is if we drag the projectile script onto something, it will automatically add a sphere collider. And we can't remove it until we remove the projectile. Simple enough. Um, and since we have this uh, sphere collider attached to it now, we're going to find it. And make sure the trigger. Because if it's not a trigger, and an enemy shoots another enemy, it's going to screw some stuff up. So this way it'll just pass right through. And after that, we will start a coroutine called kill. And a coroutine is just an object or a function that is called on a completely different thread and it's good for using timers or something that only needs to be called, say, once every five seconds. So, in order to use an enumerator, the function needs to, <coughs> er, in order to use a coroutine, the function needs to return an i enumerator. What we can do here is yield return new wait for seconds and then put in our lifespan and then destroy this object. So after 10 seconds, no matter what, this projectile gets destroyed. All right. Now, in our update function, all we're going to do is just make sure the projectile moves in its movement direction constantly. So, transform.position plus equals movement direction times speed times time dot delta time. If you remember from the last video, this makes sure that no matter what the frame rate is, it will move at, say, 20, so 20 units per second. And to make sure that it's accelerating properly, uh, if your speed is less than your max speed, Accelerate and also another thing I like to do on top of this coroutine if the renderer is off the screen so if render is if not render is visible we destroy the object. <clears throat> that way we don't have random projectiles floating in space that we can't even see. Just taking up memory and processor. 